Hi, my name is Jim and I was retired. So what does your retirement withdrawal strategy look like? Are you using the 4% rule, first postulated by Bill Bengen back in 1994? Or are you using his more updated 4.5%? Or are you following something more conservative like the 3% number that Wade Fowle recommends in his safety first approach? When I retired five years ago, I began to research all of these retirement withdrawal strategies and to find a do-it-yourself alternative to those 1% a year asset under management fees from financial planners. So stay tuned to this video for my DIY retirement withdrawal strategy. You know, in previous videos, I've mentioned some of the spreadsheets that I found out on the internet during my last five years of forced early retirement. And I've particularly mentioned Lars Kroyer, a hedge fund manager, Harvard educated, who put together a whole series of videos on his YouTube channel on how to build your own retirement planning strategy spreadsheet. And I'll put a link to his series again below. But I'm continuing my search to figure out how to map out a retirement withdrawal strategy on my own. I found many other ideas out there as I continue to search for my do-it-yourself retirement planning approach. Some of them are very complex, like this retiree portfolio model on Boggleheads website. I'm not sure many people could figure out how to fill this out and build a workable model. So I continue to search for something that would be easy for me to use and to use the Quicken for Mac data that I already keep to manage my investments. One of the things I found was a retirement withdrawal calculator from the American Association of Individual Investors. Jacqueline McClellan wrote an article in 2015 that outlaid a very simple spreadsheet. And I'm going to show you that one. But I'm also going to show you what I've done since then to build my own retirement withdrawal strategy. I'll begin with my standard word of caution. I do not have any special credentials after my name. I don't have a CFA like Jacqueline McClellan. I don't have a PhD like Wade Fowle. I am just a forced early retiree trying to do the best I can to manage my retirement. So take this as entertaining ideas from one educated consumer to another. Always do your own due diligence and seek out a professional if you need to. Hey, and be sure to like and subscribe to this channel for more ideas on how to manage a forced early retirement. It's important that you also maybe hit that bell over there because I'm going to continue this series on the spreadsheet for the next few videos and you'll get notified when I do a new one. Let's begin by looking at the AAII Retirement Withdrawal Calculator that I found. It's a very simple three-tab Excel spreadsheet. I'll show it to you in a moment. This is a link to the article from 2015 that describes the strategy behind it to calculate a payment with a PMP function rather than a 4% rule. And that seemed attractive to me. Um, I can't use a 4% rule, particularly in these years before I'm getting a pension and a uh, Social Security benefit at 70. So I needed something a little bit more flexible. And this model, I'll show you in a minute here, really attracted uh, my eye. So this is a really simple three-tab worksheet in Excel that I've downloaded from that article. This is the pure original version saved to my desktop. I'll show you the tabs. I really like this clean input tab. I, while I like this design of an input screen and then a schedule with a payment withdrawal amount based on a payment function rather than the 4% rule, um, it does have a nice little chart here too. But as Jacqueline noted, the uh, inputs don't include Social Security, a pension, required minimum distributions, taxes. And so I wanted to build my own, maybe starting with this kind of approach. 
So I began to explore the internet on ways I could fill in the gaps and turn that simple idea into a, a little bit more complex and more workable worksheet for me. Now I'm designing this in numbers, but you could easily design this in Excel or Google Sheets. And I'm going to break up this tour of my spreadsheet in the next few videos so that you could follow along. None of this is rocket science. In past videos, I've shown how I download data from my Quicken for Mac application and paste it into a spreadsheet. And I'm using the same data that I used in that last series of videos on looking at my overall asset allocations with that data. And this data, the beauty of this approach is this data is going to populate the areas that I need in the Retirement Withdrawal Strategy spreadsheet. So whereas Jacqueline calculated the money you have at retirement based on this uh, future value calculation down here of somebody saving up over the years, my version uses the present value of my Quicken invested assets as I pasted it into the Quicken values sheet. Also up here in D6, I put in 30. That's the number of years that I expect retirement in this calculation. And that'll feed the payment function. I've also built up some sections here that allow me to plug in the current year, the age of the retiree, and the spouse's age, which will also populate in the schedule that I'll show you. Now, rather than the annual average interest rate that Jacqueline used, I'm using a compounded average growth rate. And CAGR seems to smooth out results to give you a, a little bit more conservative number. So I'm using actually, and I'll show you this in a minute, the CAGR from my Quicken results over the last five years. So let me show you how the rate formula works to calculate compounded annual growth rate. In this box, I've put the value of the model investments as of April 1st, 2016. That date populates here. I've taken the date of the data, which was April 15th, 2021. And with a year frac calculation, I've calculated that's just over five years. That now feeds this rate formula here, where the rate looks at the years, the initial investment, and then the current investment. In, this, in, in the rate formula, it's actually FV, but in this case, to calculate CAGR, it's your current up-to-date investment values. That gives you a CAGR of 7.51% over the past little over five years. But I've drawn a little bit more conservative by using the same approach that Jacqueline had for a real rate of return. And in my research, I've looked at the, the, the genesis of that, and that's the Irving Fisher formula that she had in her calculations. And so I've got that here. The same calculation is using the uh, rate of return and in this case, the CAGR, with the inflation rate to give you a real rate of return of 4.38%. And rather than using the CAGR or an average annual result uh, in my next sheet where I expect investments to grow, I'm going to use this real rate of return to be a little bit more conservative. Down here in the spreadsheet, I've also included a section for social security choices. And this is similar to the same kind of choices I outlined in a previous video on why I'm waiting for 70. I have, in this case, the model uh, retiree is waited till 70. And this calculation right here is looking up 70 and getting the value. And in this case, the values are the same values I shared before for my model retirees from the Social Security's calculator. But you can use your own My Social Security account to plug in the numbers for 62, 67, and 70 for your own worksheet. 
And in this case, I, I haven't tried anything sophisticated here for spousal benefits. I'm just going to assume that the spousal benefits will begin at 67. And as always, that the spousal benefit is one half of the full retirement age benefit. Don't make a mistake to think that it's half of the 70 benefit. I've also added a little section down here for pension choices. The model retiree will have a pension that will begin at 65. And as with this age uh, for Social Security, the spousal benefit age, and the pension age, they will help populate the main sheet that I'll show you in the future. Down here, I've left the future value calculator that Jacqueline had. It's a very simple tool, and I've used it with my kids to quickly demonstrate the value of saving over time. Finally, my worksheet will also include a way of handling required minimum distribution. So I've plugged in the most recent data for the period factors that uh, are for a uniform life uh, married couple uh, calculation. So they're all here. Note that they may change. Uh, this is what's currently in the, in the Federal Register, um, and it may need to be updated before I actually I turn 72, and definitely by the time this model retiree turns 72. And now let me give you a little glimpse of the main sheet and I'll show you how all this pulls together. I'll go through this in greater detail in future videos. As you can see, this is a little complex. It's not as complex as some of those bogglehead versions, but it includes a column for all of the income sources that you can expect in your retirement. So I've added the uh, retirement years, the age of the, of the, the uh, retiree, the spouse age, and all of those populate from the input page and then go down by adding one. Um, and the beauty of this whole spreadsheet, it starts with this first row, all of these values for the tax deferred accounts, the tax free accounts, the taxable accounts, all come from the Quicken spreadsheet. And as you can see, this, it, you got it. I left a comment here, check to make sure the formulas are right. As your Quicken values change, you want to make sure they're not picking up the wrong number. So in, the easiest way to do that is to look at and edit the formula and see, is your IRA linking to the right thing? And it jumps over and says, yep, yeah, it's got it. And that's how you can calculate and make sure that it's pulling the right data. So I've got the right data here for the IRA, 401k, spousal, uh, spouse's IRA, an annuity balance even, a Roth IRA, a Roth 401k balance, a future column here for spousal uh, IRA, Roth IRA, broker balances, savings, giving you the total retired assets uh, from my previous spreadsheets. Now, in future videos, I'm gonna show you how I calculate withdrawals, how I calculate a withdrawal rate, how I calculate the earnings of investments, the total available income, tracking expenses inflated, the shortfall or, or uh, plus that you'll have, taxes, and uh, the total of shortfall after taxes. I'll show you all of this in future videos, so be sure to stay tuned. I will concentrate on ideas like these on managing a forced early retirement. That's why my channel is called I Was Retired. So be sure to like and subscribe if you'd like more of these ideas. Thanks.